boys club in some of these forums that people are kind of dicks on uh, is not necessarily needed to, to be gone to as, as much as when I was getting started a decade ago. Um, what, what, what are some ideas that you have about like trying to get more women involved and, you know, how could we, how, and how, and I guess non-binary people, like how could we, how do we make the place more inclusive? Now, if I had all the answers, I would, I would have fixed it all. Like I'm a, I'm, I'm a 40 year old white dude and I have all the answers. Um, but but I think, um, I, I, there's a few things I thought about, like it's, this, is, this might sound a bit naive, but like I honestly, I think you know, my my mum was wonderful. Um, when I was working in London, we would fly to New York to work with Emily Lazar because she's like the best mastering engineer in the world. Like I worked under Bjork for a number of years, so I've always been around great women, and it never really, honestly, was just very naive and and thought like, oh, sexism was done in the eighties. You know what I mean? Now it now <laughs> it's all solved. And then it was only really once I started talking to more women about their experiences, you're like, oh my god. So. Really, the the majority of people out there, I think, are welcoming and open and inclusive. But then the actions of a few people can make certain others feel unwelcome. And even, again, my own experience of just like being a nerd in a jock school, like we all know what it's like to feel excluded based on anything. Or, you know, even when I moved to New Zealand, I had a different accent to the other kids. So so kind of narrow-minded, insecure people will pick up on a difference and they'll they'll try to push you away for it as a way to help themselves feel better. So fundamentally, all I'm trying to do, my big strategy so far is literally just let people know, like, you are welcome here. We are here for you. This is a fundamentally important thing. And, and the, you know, the Complete Producer Network, the, the, the underlying kind of um, mission statement behind it is that I just think the world would be... A, infinitely better place if everyone was able to be creative you know every single person has a voice that matters um and every single person can develop the abilities the skills to get that voice out into the world um so you know we have you would have seen it ben like i ask a few questions when people come in and one of them is just like everyone is welcome here and we're specifically focused on on gender inclusivity we believe that we should have even even gender representation in music are you down can you support this? You know what I mean? And I think even that's as much for a woman or non-binary person coming into music as it is for a dude who might not have really thought about it to just like, let me ask you the question, bro. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I've actually started let it, doing let this. that register. Yeah. I've started bit. doing this with some of the pro audio companies I work with. Like, um, you know, I'm, I've been featured on countless promotional materials for high end audio brands. And um, a couple of years ago, I actually went on everyone's website and was like, how many women are there on this website? And some of them have none. And it's not because we are missing great female record producers or engineers. You know, like Trina Schumacher, Sylvia Massey were like some of my heroes when I was coming up, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, So I've just started writing to them as well and just being like, hey, couldn't help but notice that it's a fucking sausage fest on here. Like, not taking away from my abilities or anyone else, but I literally have offered to people, like, if you don't have enough room on your artist roster, I'll step off if that will make some space for a woman to come on here. <laughs> okay? But, like, so so I think just making it explicit is is what we can do. Uh, first, Getting it into the conversation. Yeah, and, and, and just, just like, like a, just like... Something that you don't think about. Yeah, for, for women to know, like, you are welcome here. Like, I... You know, I went to a boys' school for a couple of years, and I hate being in a in a homogeneously masculine environment. Like, I'm I don't have any problem with men at all, but I, you know, there's I really like different energies. It's it's a natural part of us as a human species. So, you right. know what I mean? And and yeah. So so just but literally saying, you know, you're welcome here. Um, and that, and because I control the complete producer network, I control it. You know what I mean? Like if someone <laughs> is being an asshole, I've never had to do it, but I can just eject someone from the network. So fundamentally, uh, for non-male people to know that they can come here, ask any questions that are on their mind, they'll be welcomed. They'll be treated just like a regular normal human being like everyone else. And if someone is a dick, like, just let me know and I'll happily boot them. Um, cause that's, it's just like, I wouldn't stand for it in a session that I was running. Um, and I won't stand for it on my corner of the internet. And that's why I built that yeah. corner of the internet. Um, yeah. I but, love it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 
it's a it's a work in progress, and hopefully we'll we'll be able to see some fruits of that labor. You know, I hope so. As the years you know? go on, yeah. You know? Um, you know, there's just so much so much human potential out there. You know, and if if yeah. you just think. Uh, I, I really, you know, I'm, I'm pretty into like science fiction as well, right? And and if you get into like these post scarcity societies where it's like we've solved the the fundamental issues of like how do we provide for anyone? We've eradicated poverty. We're living in harmony with with nature and everything. Like a, a big bigger question I like to ask myself is like how could we actually get there? And I genuinely believe that if the majority or if, if everyone on earth had a creative pursuit to put their energy into mm. like how cool do you think the world would be if instead of people getting really like shitty and aggressive with someone because they're different they're like i can't wait to get home and um work on my stop motion animation you know what i mean or yeah. i can't wait to get home and work on my garden <laughs> or i can't wait to get home and cook a beautiful meal for my family or i can't wait to get home and make some sick beats do you know what i mean like i, I think uh, when when a, when a human is creatively engaged, we kind of access our higher nature. Um, mm. You know what I mean? The, That's the, so cool. Yeah, the beauty and mystery of of life is, is kind of is revealed to us. Um, yeah, this yeah. <laughs> is uh, yeah, it's it's like world peace through uh, through you know the arts. Yeah. And it's why my, the arts my, are important. My mom is a, is a lactation consultant, and she would always say, world peace through breastfeeding. Totally which is agree. The first time I'm, I'm bringing this up on the podcast. Great. But, send, her, send her my regards. I love that. But she's like, you know, like, I've literally, like, helped Palestinians and Israelis get mm-hmm. better at breastfeeding. This, mm-hmm. is, this is how we, you know, it's a connector. Like, we're yeah. all, it's a common human thing. Yeah, so, totally. Like, uh, shout out to mom for, for that. But... But yeah, I, I love it. That's a, it's 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 so true because we have something that we're passionate about beyond just like ah f these guys. They're making my life so hard, you know, or mm-hmm. scapegoating and all this shit. S- scapegoating so. is yeah. We want we want to one hundred percent point out the erroneousness of thinking that someone else is the reason for your yeah. exactly. Of yeah. course, there are obvious exceptions. You know what I mean? We can and and that's what I'll, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm not a political mastermind or anything like that. But um, yeah. It's a good, it's a good like u- utopian vision with an actual kind of, uh, almost like a. It's it's not just theoretical because it's like yeah, let's find a hobby, let's find something artistic that you can kind of get into. Yeah, yeah. So it's practical as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and anyone who knows the kind of the joy of making stuff, yeah, will relate. It's you know yeah. what, what were you saying earlier about like you know we were talking about um, you kind of you have this goal and then you hit it and you're a bit lost. It's like, yep. um, I can't remember who this is attributed to, but it's basically like we're actually at our happiest when we're just making progress towards something, when we can see that we're visibly making progress. And that's kind of a cool thing about doing anything creative. And in particular, our work in the studios, you can just choose any zone and get better at it. And actually feeling that improvement um, is kind of like the best drug in the world you know it's 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 viscerally exciting uh, do, you, do you mind if i tell people about this one program i teach called the beats accelerator process it's, it's i don't mind i don't mind at all and you've, on... you've prompted another question in my brain okay but, cool but, so but first a... but first pitch it yeah right well the, well the beats accelerator Please. process is ostensibly a drum programming course or i kind of teach you how to go from like a blank screen and an empty folder uh through building out like an incredible library sampler instrument so that you can just bash out like super engaging dynamic drum tracks in like a matter of minutes. Um, But fundamentally, it's actually a course about creativity and recalibrating your brain's relationship with creativity, with the mystery of of where this stuff comes from. It's like to open a a channel, an open channel between like your inner voice and the speakers. Uh, But a big halfway through the program after like we've kind of covered a whole bunch of basics, built out a library that works, built out all these sampler instruments. There's a whole module where I just kind of introduce you to a practice system. When we're playing instruments or learning instruments, we all know, do your scales. We all know how to practice with our instruments, but we don't really know how to practice with our door, for example. Um, So I I kind of, there's a whole backstory to how I wound up like discovering this whole methodology, like, you know, learned a bunch of stuff from different people, but I do a huge amount of reading around like neuroscience and 
And I got really into productivity because I was sick of working like 17 hour days and being perpetually exhausted. But fundamentally, um, the the neuro. What's the name of that neuroscientist in in in, in Montreal? Uh, oh God, Le- Levitin, know. Daniel Levitin. All right, oh, this yeah. is your brain on music. Yeah. Right. Okay. Is he Maybe. in Montreal? Didn't know Did, that. I think he's. I think he's a McGill guy. Okay. Cool. Cool. Nice. Yeah. So. So, <laughs> so yeah. So, sorry, I just couldn't help but think about that connection. But um, you know, we we're talking about like being anxious in the studio. Like I, when I moved to LA, I kind of hit realized that I was so used to the super slow way of making tracks. Like you know. Prodigy, we'd spend five days on a kick drum and a bass line if we needed to. <laughs> Not even joking and wow. then throw it out. But then you're suddenly in an LA writing session. It's like you have three hours with this person. And I kind of noticed yep. I'd I'd get an initial idea down then be kind of like kind of paralyzed, like I'd have a really hard time moving it forward. So I was just like, I need to rejig creativity. So you there's need to, a, you need to yes and. Exactly, exactly. But but how like it's one thing to say it, but how to actually tangibly do it in the studio. So I kind of wound up building this regimen for myself and, you know, every day, first thing in the morning, I just spend 55 minutes and, and make a beat. It sounds really simple. But basically, once I started stringing a number of those together, like, just like, I became pretty much euphoric constantly. And when you know that you can just sit down and create, um, sometimes in a very small period of time, like your whole concept to reality kind of shifts. Um, your whole feeling for like, what did I do with my day totally shifts as well. You're like, I made something, I made something cool. Or it doesn't even matter if it's cool or not. Just knowing like I'm, I'm like this wellspring of manifestation from the, from the mm. infinite source of intelligence and energy into tangible artifacts in the physical world. You know what I mean? It, it gets pretty wild. But we're just talking, you know, fundamentally, like you get this new source of happiness and, you know, how we make the world a better place. And so if everyone's like, improving and learning and happiness is found in making progress towards a goal, not necessarily in the achieving the goal itself, you know, mm-hmm. um, then. Yeah. You're like, you're, you're like a philosopher. <laughs> you got to get philosophical, man. You're in one room your whole life, more or less, you know, you got to have a, have a rich inner world. Wait, wait, wait. So I, I guess fin- finish wrapping your, your pitch on the, on the Beats Accelerator Okay. So, program. I mean, that's it basically like, you know, you can go to, you can go to beatsaccelerator.com and sign up and, um, it, Doors open like maybe four times a year so you can get your name on the wait list. And actually, if you don't mind me saying, like I'm just actually putting together a wait list for a new program called Mix Accelerator Process. Um, and I'm, I'm be... assuming it's a similar mindset kind of kind, kind of thing. thing. Yeah, fun, fun, the, the fundamental goal is just um, to de- demystify the mixing process so that technology only ever acts in service of your vision, your sonic vision. Mixing yeah. is like a vast and nuanced field. Um and I think that there's so much information out there about it. And again, through spending like literally hundreds of hours on Twitch talking to people um, and doing track feedback, I just noticed people are getting hung up over and over and over again on like mixing. Um, so, and <laughs> interestingly enough, both like, you know, about, about you know, 50 to 70% of my income comes from mixing. So I'm really good at it. So yes, I'll teach you all the stuff about how I mix, but then it's also like, really want you to understand like the physics of sound arrangement dynamics what stuff mixing can't finish because what's most fun to me now as a producer is knowing what i need to sort out before i mix and i have a visceral understanding of that because of mixing anyway that's just like one little side quest but you know there's going to be like mm. the full on like vocal processing master class there's going to be like how the physics of sound works but the the fundamental journey that you go on Again, like demystifying the mixing process so that the technology will never stand in the way of realizing your ideas. Um, yeah. And Beats Accelerator process is like break free of the loop and finish better music faster for the rest of your life, you know? Um, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. And, and this is all, I, actually, Ben, you've got, you've got a world exclusive here. Um, <laughs> I'm working on, uh, I, I have a whole huge map. Basically, these are all filling in gaps of like, you know, there's a complete producer network. And basically what I'm trying to do is create like the complete producer process. Um, Mm. I've worked, you know, whether it's being like a dedicated engineer, dedicated programmer, dedicated this and that, I've worked in so many niches within our industry that I think one of my greatest skills is an ability to kind of tie it all together into one whole. So I basically want to create like this master jumbo resource that you can just keep diving into over and over as you grow and as you evolve that has like a holistic structure around it so you're not just constantly trying to piece together these little isolated silos of information into something practical 
Right. Um, you're not like going on University of YouTube and getting lost down a million rabbit holes. It's yeah. like it's there. You don't have to waste time. That was one of the great things also that I noticed about the complete producer network is like it does have like a feel almost like a Facebook group, mm-hmm. but without any of the distractions. Yeah. And without any of the algorithms trying to pull you in any sort of direction. It's like yeah. I'm focused, I'm here, let me learn or let me chat or 